No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it wrong. Following podcast contains mature content. The few simple expressed by the host are not those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one wrestling podcast on Porn of the Smack and Raw podcast, where Lacey goes back to basics. Sounds like a porno, but it really isn't. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter, and I am here with my co-hosts this evening. She is the host of the She Lead Showcase inside the mind of in the crowd, and. Story time with the hardest working woman in podcasting today, Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. Hey, what up? Uh, Shaman Ashili and other shit too. <laughs> I'm a lot of things. I'm a lot of things. Potato Kate's whatever. Subtle <laughs> Katie. Whatever. Yeah. Potato wedge. <laughs> yeah, potato, potato wedge. <laughs> potato Kate's, whatever the fuck you want to call her. <laughs> um also with me this evening. He is the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, kind of, because he just kind of stopped doing that show. He is also uh, Daddy Delgado and my friend Vince. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I can't sleep at night. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. Whoa, because the Bulls are losing? It's a rough week. It's been a rough week for me. (laughs) The Bulls lost, yes, but also Mexico got eliminated in the World Cup. It's a it's a bad week for Mexico. They should have played better. Um, <laughs> we, I'm sure we will get into that though. I, I'm, I'm sure we will get into that. Uh, little full transparency for Jesus and Allison who are in the chat, and anyone else who is joining us. Thank you. And if you're listening to this later uh, as well, there are two more episodes of the Smag and Raw podcast in 2022, which means Katie has two more weeks to find a way to keep Vince from being on the show so that she can break the tie and become Pornhub Poppy. Otherwise, Vince has the tiebreaker and will win the race for Pornhub Poppy. So you better start praying to whatever pagan gods you worship that he gets the (laughs) flu, non-lethal, and misses a week. Uh, Put on your big witch hat, do whatever you got to do to make this happen, because otherwise, Vince will be Pornhub Poppy. Also... Uh, we will be back the week after uh, New Year's, so New Year's weekend. We will not do one, but then, yeah, so New Year's is, I think, Saturday, Sunday, so that Friday we won't be here, but the next Friday we will. Possibly. Um, I might not be here. Vince, possibly, Katie, or whoever he decides to get his co-host may be running without me, uh, because I will be moving, and at some point in that time period, I don't necessarily know like in what state. I'm going to have if I even have an office or what's going to be going. So we're just going to have to see. Maybe I'll hit up Travis and be like, hey, Travis, you're going to have to work a week and, uh, you know, watch wrestling. And we'll let uh, Travis just berate Vince for an hour and a half. It'll be fun. Oh, my God. Yes. Speaking of fun whatsoever. I think it sounds like fun to everybody else. But Um, speaking of Travis. Uh, Travis created this little company called Creation World, and it is the banner under which the Smack and Raw podcast exists. If you're watching us on YouTube or Twitch, you are already watching us at Creation World, uh, twitch.tv slash Creation World or youtube.com slash Creation World. Uh, that's where you can find us. Also, you can find us at creationworld.com on Twitter and Instagram at It's Creation World, I T S C R E A T I A World, and all of these other places that you can go to get the Patreon. From Linktree slash Creation World, which will get you Return to Wrestling and all the other great content that we put out there. Everything that is Creation World, um, hashtag them dragons. If you're getting caught up and you, you're not caught up on House of the Dragon or Creation Comics or all of these other great things we do, so please go show us some support and do that. If you are watching us on Twitch and you have a free subscription from Amazon Prime because you are an Amazon Prime member, I would appreciate if you gave it to us or one of your favorite Twitch streamers. Uh, it's free for you to do so 
doesn't cost you anything and it takes money out of Amazon's pocket. So please do that. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know you're here. I would appreciate that as well. Tell me how much I suck, how great these two are, or vice versa. Whatever you want to do, I don't care. I take criticism fantastic. I don't give a fuck what you guys think. I'm just doing the show for me. Um, and them. I like them. Um, and the people in the chat. You guys are great, too, because you're here. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the chat. Uh, t-shirts, uh, Pro Wrestling Pro Choice t-shirts up on our shop. Again, link tree. Uh, you can get them from um, Katie or us and in various colors. Money from our shirts at the end of the month is donated to Women's Reproductive Assistance Project. And Katie's t-shirts is donated to Planned Parenthood. So if you want to support women's rights to choose, uh, please go do that. Also, haven't done it in a while, but Black Lives still do matter. And YK Wrestling still has Black Lives Matter t-shirts that we love that you can get and wear. And uh, all that money is donated to good causes as well, directly from TC to GoFundMes to support black youths or people who have been through, uh, you know, issues, a, a variety of things in the black community. Uh, TC puts that money into. So please go do that as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think that's it. Did I forget anything? No, I think you knocked it all out of the park. Are you guys both good? Happy? I'm content. Are you happy to be here this week, Katie? Because you were yes. not happy to be here last week. Okay. Vince, are you are you gonna be okay with the Bulls getting, you know, that ass tapped? <sighs> no, they're getting their cheeks clapped. Yeah. Uh no Lou. They're giving it's back okay. shots right now. Yeah, they're taking back shots. Yeah, it's 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 a rough go around for us Bulls fans here in Chicago, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay once we get start talking about some wrestling and things we swallowing. Okay. Uh, the the only thing I have for news and rumors, unless you guys have anything else that I may have forgot and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, Andrade had titty surgery. <laughs> yes. Um, Charlotte okay. had her implants taken out, and he's getting his put in. Is I think how that was going. Hi, Will. Um, <laughs> or he tore his pec like Cody. Something. In the titty area, uh, I just expect to see a fuller chest when he comes back. In terms of news and rumors, there is there was speculation based off of what happened on Dynamite that Ray goes on his way to WWE. That is true. There is speculation on that. There's also speculation that uh, Eric Young. No, uh, yeah, him too. If you care about Eric Young and Impact, uh, it was actually a cool video that he did with some guy named cody deaner which is the worst wrestling name i think i've ever heard of um and <laughs> i watched deaner. stardust um so apparently cody deaner murdered eric young and now he's free to go back to wwe uh, essentially yeah. eric young is the sickness the sickness is failure and the only way to rid impact of the sickness is to murder it with a shank and uh beat it to a bloody pulp in uh improvised jail interrogation room or yeah. prison uh, police interrogation room. Police, that's the word. You're doing great. And uh, Robert Roode had his neck fused. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Neck fusion. Appreciate neck fusion that, Jesus. Not the cold kind, like in Dragon Ball Z. Through the front of the neck. Eek. Yikes. That's, that sounds that sounds. Is rough. there going to be a hole there? I don't th th No. Mm. No, no. Stop. Stop that. Just saying. You thought what was Sammy Callahan, JJ? The person getting murdered? No, that was Cody Deaner from what I saw. And Cody the murderer. <laughs> it's a terrible fucking name. It really is. It's pretty terrible. Like, I feel like there's been worse names out there. I can't think of any on the spot, but it's probably not the worst name in the world. See, there you go, Jesus. Whole different level of deep throat. Um, <laughs> I hate you guys so much. <laughs> why? We started the show with a fucking Lacey Evans porno joke. How can you hate this show? <laughs> oh, oh, man. You know Hey, it, the broadcast is here. Yeah. Yeah. I promise, Katie, that I'm going to let you talk as much as you want to talk, and I will stop anyone from interrupting you. Um, I want you to be able to get your full thoughts out, which is why I'm going to give you a chance to talk about, uh, the recent bill that was passed. Uh, we'll do a little bit of politics while we're here in news and rumors. Uh, let you talk about the, uh, the marriage bill that was passed. 
Oh, yeah, the Respect for Marriage Act that I didn't get to talk about it on my own fucking show. Um, yeah, so the Senate passed the bill, which means same-sex marriage and interracial marriage is now going to, like, basically, if you're in a same-sex marriage or an interracial marriage, the law can't fuck with you anymore. Uh, and that's something we needed. We, me, I'm bisexual. I, I'm all about interracial couples being a thing. Uh, so the fact that I don't have to worry about that in my later years, if I get married, uh, like if I get you married will. to a woman, if, uh, like if I get married to a woman, if I get married to a black guy, whatever it is, I have no fear or I will not have any fear that the government can fuck with my marriage. So I'm happy for that. And yeah, obviously everyone should just be protected by that, but that's the way the world has been for fucking years and they don't like change. So fair enough. Yeah. Um, at least one bill got passed by the Senate that mattered this week. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but if you know, you know. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, let's mix it up. Vince, spit or swallow. Okay. Uh, just because it was the, the thing I enjoyed the most for <laughs> the oddest reasons, I'm going to swallow Apollo Cruz's and Braun Breaker's passive-aggressive dinner date that they had together. I thought that was one. dinner, Brenner, whatever you want to call it, breakfast dates. Uh, I thought it was great. I don't know why I enjoyed it. It was like so passive aggressive. It was a an interesting way to build up a match. That's what next week Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, on the tenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wasn't looking forward to the match prior to this, but like I don't know what it was about the Denny's setting that they had that they just like going back and forth that I really enjoyed. And that's actually kind of like my vote right now for the thumbnail is to have them gazing each other as eyes as the thumbnail. I don't have any options for a thumbnail. So yeah, I, I, that is a possibility. Um, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Like it, I, it's better than a lot of the shit that we got with Braun Breaker previously uh, mm. for his feud. So there's that. I was excited when Apollo Cruz came back to see Braun and Apollo. So I'm excited for this. I honestly, just because I fucking hate the fact that he has won every championship match with a spear for, I can only remember now, hope that Braun fucking loses, gets called up Damn. to the main roster, and then they're like, you can't do spears anymore because there are people spearing up here. Uh, too many. Uh, so figure something else the fuck out. So, uh, and I love to see Apollo getting an NXT title. Yeah, Apollo being NXT The champion. gore is a spear. You did not slip that in. The gore is I just spear. ignore it because he's wrong. He just has yeah, to admit see, it. If I ignore it, then he gets it in. And if I don't say anything, then it, then it makes him kind of right because I didn't dispute it. And I have to dispute it so he knows that he's fucking wrong. Well, he Incorrect. But I agree with you on the fact that I want to see Apollo Crews be NXT champion. We've been saying it. A lot of wrestling fans have been saying it for the, like the longest now that he got called up way too soon from his earlier first stint in NXT. He should have been NXT champion. He would have been a great NXT champion to slowly develop and just kind of like get some seasoning, so to speak. So I'm all for it. I'm kind of over Brian. The, the only interesting thing he's done the last few weeks that I've cared about was this whole Brenner date that he had with Apollo. So hopefully Apollo like has like the visions or whatever thing he writes down in his notepad and he gets the dub. Someone needs to get a dub. God knows it's not Chicago. Any thoughts, Katie? Uh, I mean, I'm obviously very excited about Apollo and Braun. Uh, this, I mean... It was just a way to build because they really haven't had a lot of interaction and the match literally is next week. Um, I will say, yeah, I would like Apollo to win, but keeping it on Braun and then having Mello beat Braun for the title would be kind of awesome too. Um, Mello just needs to win the Bob Punk period. But regardless, that match is going to, like, Apollo and Braun is going to be fantastic. Yeah, so. it's going to be good. All right. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow? Um, okay, so, like, you know me, I usually go in order of the shows. But on SmackDown, I was surprised with a return. I saw zero reports. Now, if you know me, you know I love Tegan Knox. Tegan? Stop. 
no, we are not doing that right now. That woman has had the worst luck ever with her knees, and I'm happy she is back. She looks good. I love her hair. And the, the fact that we're going to get her and Liv as a tag team, probably. Maybe. I'm mm-hmm. I'm all about it. They need someone for damage control on SmackDown. Raw has 98% of the women. So utilize the SmackDown talent that you have. And I, I, just, I just wasn't expecting Tegan at all. And that it was like Johnny all over again. Like nobody knew Johnny was gonna show up on Monday Night Raw. I had zero fucking idea Tegan Knox was gonna show up on SmackDown. I kind of wish it happened next week when I was there in person. <laughs> I'll allow it. But Wait, you're going to SmackDown next week? Yeah. Interesting. I live no, twenty you... minutes from the arena. I'm going on the show. I'm gonna be on the so show. So you could possibly go to the SmackDown next week. And then the following week, I could possibly go to the SmackDown that week. We could be at, at SmackDown consecutively, back to back. Well, I mean, I already have my ticket. And I've had my ticket for like two months. I wait till the last minute because it's SmackDown. And ticket prices are kind of steep now. I mean, eh, but I haven't been to a SmackDown in like, I don't, the last time SmackDown was here was like five years ago. Really? So, yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't rough. been to a SmackDown since before Katie was born, so. Oh, that was plus 26 get, years. Plus, you get Kurt Angle birthday celebration. So, that was, listen, uh, as I should. Uh, okay, so you were born. It's been about 20, maybe 19 years. Was the last time okay. I went to SmackDown. What was the last uh, WWE show you went to, Matt? Uh, last WWE show I went to would have been, I think, Women's War Games, uh, the first ever. The one here in Chicago, right? NXT mm-hmm. War Games, Chicago. Yeah, I have not. I don't think I've been to one since the pandemic. So, mm. okay, all right. all right. I'm a little hesitant about going to SmackDown just because the Raw I went to, which was the one like two weeks right before WrestleMania, where everybody was anticipating Cody, and it mm. wasn't like the best Raw. So I, it, I, I'm gonna wait and see. I'm gonna. I, I'd probably get the tickets last minute if I go. Why? Why are we talking about SmackDown? Uh, listen, we are here to talk about Tanika Knox's, the ghost of Tanika Knox's knees. Like that, <laughs> they are here. She couldn't pick a fucking hair color, so she picked them all and looked fantastic doing it. The what? shiniest wizard needs a little buffering because it wasn't as shiny. I feel like it was the pants. Shh. I feel like the pants caught her up. Like. They're baggy she and ripped. She hasn't and... wrestled in so long. Also, she's Does having not... visa issues, which is why she couldn't even be over here. Like, I love Tegan Knox being back. I popped when she came back. My, I just couldn't get over it, like the, the very terrible shiniest wizard she tried to deliver. See, and that's cut. what's fucking wrong. You're focusing on that instead of focusing on her just being back in general. Well, I'm and also. You didn't focus on that when Dijak came back, and I was shitting on Dijak for his shitty fucking botch of a fucking finisher. It was like, oh, but he... and I, I tried to tell you he was a racist cop, and we're gonna talk about it. And y'all didn't fucking believe me, and now here we are a week later, and nobody fucking believed me. Now you do. Now you do. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> but no, you weren't shitting on Dijak, but now we're gonna shit on Tegan when Dijak just as bad. I'm not shitting That's on Tegan. Hmm. Suspicious. No, I, I called maybe out. Maybe I, I called out like um, Dijak's botch of a finish. I was like, it was terrible, but I'm just glad to see him back. I, I oh, popped more for Dijak than Tegan Knox. Uh, I don't know because uh, we can move on. It, we, well, we've talked. Damage control came out, talked their shit, lived in front of them. She's like, oh, well, one, two, three. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Goes down there, gets her ass whooped. Then music hits, and they're like, who is that? And I'm like, yeah, who the fuck is that? And then, oh, my God, it's Tanika Knox's, the ghost of Tegan Knox's knees. Like, <laughs> Tanika Knox, like, let's go. And she runs down, and then she gets jumped, and then Liv's like, I know how to even up the odds. I'll get a kendo stick. And she does. And then they run away, and Bailey gets held, and Bailey gets the shiniest wizard, kind of. Uh, she tried. Like I said, I think it was the baggy pants. I think that's what fucked It could have been. It could have been. That, that fit was, like, on point. She looked great. She did. She did forget half of her pants. I'm not complaining, but she did. Um, I would never complain. (laughs) Someone just hit a steel drum. What the fuck was that? I think Vince kicked something. 
I no, think it's it's the thing. it's it's the thing where you put your keyboard on the desk. So my desk has that, even though I don't have a keyboard, and I don't feel like removing it. So I accidentally like hit it. So it, it made the, the, the undercarriage, like the thing that pulls out from underneath the desk to hold. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that Vin, thing. Vince okay. need himself in the undercarriage. Um, oh, okay. Elbowed. I'm gonna swallow Becky Lynch's opening promo for Monday Night Raw. Uh, the man has come back around. Which the entire reason my wife has pretty much given up watching wrestling was she was a huge Becky Lynch the man fan. She did not like big time backs. So it did not do it for her. So now that the man is back, we'll see if my wife is back into wrestling. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, it's on the Titan Tron. It's in the announcements. Like it is the man Becky Lynch. This is the mm-hmm. character version of Becky Lynch in my opinion. Um, apparently Bob's having a great night out in the crowd, just getting <laughs> chatted up by Becky. As he should. Uh, uh, Bailey ends up running her mouth and then Becky wants to fight. Damage control comes through the crowd after Becky. They brawl all over the place. It was a fun opening segment. Kick it off with the women and Becky Lynch. And I was a fan. So swallow. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I thought that was good. I was a little hesitant about Becky Lynch's uh, gear at, at um, Survivor Series just because it seemed very uh, big time Bex-esque inspired, but Seeing her with the whole man theme and aesthetic, that's that's the Becky Lynch I want to see. And hopefully she doesn't do the flamboyant gear anymore because I was never a fan of it. I thought it was a little clunky. But yeah. I mean, I mean, Becky being back in general, like it was needed. Uh, I mean, SmackDown definitely needs something. Um, but Becky yeah. coming back was earlier than most people anticipated. And I mean, a special little shout out to EO for just brawling in a neck brace. He really shout just came down, t- hand taped up, neck brace on, fighting for her life. Congratulations, EO. EO's a badass, man. You can't fuck with EO. She, doesn't she give is. Fuck. She didn't give a fuck. Um, she a flying fuck. Vince. Yeah. Sorry, I just thought, <laughs> I just got in my mind oh, when she was doing the promo battle with Oscar a few weeks back, and she just like, bitch. <laughs> For whatever reason, that just came into my head, and I just started laughing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and swallow uh, the opening to Dynamite with Mox and the surprise return of Hangman Page. I thought that was a fiery way to start off Rampage. I mean, Dynamite, the AW show that shows up on Wednesday. Um, it was a great way to open up, and then they did the backstage brawls by the garage area. Like, felt very WCW-esque, like, camera shot. So, I'm a for it. Like, this is a high-profile match for both Hangman and Mox. It gives them something to do without having to revolve around the title. So, this is a feud I'm interested to see continuously build up. Because it feels like it has the intensity of what Hangman Punk was supposed to have without the whole bitchiness between Punk and Hangman. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I again, I've been very distracted lately, and Mox was out there, and I am not the biggest Mox fan, so I was like half paying attention, and like I heard Hangman's music, but it didn't register that it was Hangman's music. And then I looked down, and I'm like, holy shit, it's fucking Hangman. He's whooping Mox's ass on the like, what is going on here? He fell off the rampway, poor he guy. Did. Like there was some <laughs> shit going on. But what's oh, most man. important about this is both men after the. WCWS backstage brawl portion were removed from the building, which we will talk about a little bit as to why that's important, but it is important. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm with you. That was a big swallow for me, too. Oh, yeah. Hangman being cleared? Well, not officially as of yet. They That's why he was there was to get cleared. Um, Mm -hmm. But more than likely, he will be cleared in the next few weeks. So they can continue this. And they're playing into the fact that the last time Hangman was in the ring, he did get hurt be- because, all in quotes, because of Mox. So the fact that they're playing into that and Mox, right. like, immediately was just like, oh, like, do you not remember? And then just <laughs> Hangman said, no, fuck this. Throws hands. You <laughs> fucking huh? Yeah, that's the kind of energy I want to see from Hangman. That, that was great intensity. And just... Because I want to talk about it a little bit, and I just remembered. Shout out to uh, to the Kodakai for wearing the assless chaps like Hangman should have been wearing. So shout out to the Kodakai. She's getting a quick swallow right there. They're just chaps. 
assless chaps. No, they're it's... just chaps, Vince. All chaps are assless. Just like all gores are spears, all chaps are assless. It's the same fucking thing. Well, Hangman needs to take notes because that's what I want to see on a regular uh, basis from him. I'm sure we will be talking about that, JJ, but I agree. Uh, also, shout out to Nick from the UW Pod, the Universal Wrestling Podcast, to join us. And uh, Pretty Kyle from the Apron Bump is here as well to join JJ and Jesus and Will and Allison if they're still here. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. Katie, no. unless you got anything more on Hangman <laughs> and Mox, no. spit or swallow. I'm going to swallow um, Rhea Ripley, <laughs> me and him, and that match, and then the match that transpired after that, obviously being the OC versus Judgment Day. Um, Rhea's fantastic. Medium's fantastic. Their chemistry is great. Mia beating up Finn. Always great. Love me some intergender. You called me greedy because I wanted more. Disrespectful. <laughs> uh, I want a full ass match. I legitimately want Rhea versus AJ or Mia and Finn. Like, I want the actual match. It's not going to happen, but I want it. Vince, can you translate that in English for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I totally can. Uh, if I can find it. I it's, can't it's find right it. right on the screen. It's right on the screen. Oh, you want me to translate it? Yes, I would like you to translate it because there is one section of that I do not understand. Donde esta? I understand. Senora, I understand. El liqueo. That other thing? El yeah, liqueo. So that? it translates to... Where's the leak, ma'am? Ah, <laughs> Beautiful. See, yeah. Jesus out here uh, making sure you do your fucking job, and I appreciate it, Jesus. Uh, Katie, I'm with you. That was the next thing on my list for Raw. We got Rhea versus Mia breaks down into an eight-person tag. Rhea and Mia get a little inner gender action, and instead of just being happy that you got it, you're like, I want all the inner, and that's why I called you greedy, because you're not wrong. Like, I get it, but at the same time, you've also got to just appreciate what you can get and the more we appreciate it, we can get there. So take this, take this <laughs> little snack, this little bite, take your swallow, and then hope that this continues and you get more, eventually a mouthful. Look, I can't even blame Katie for wanting more because when you're deprived of the one thing you want in life and you finally get it, you want to get all your money's worth. <sighs> <sighs> um. um yeah, so hopefully Katie gets a mouthful of intergender action here very soon. And also Rhea got the win. Yeah, shout out to Rhea. Yep, yeah, with the pin. The best pin. With the pin. With the best yeah. pin. Uh, I'm going to swallow the Street Profits are back. That was my next one. I kind of forgot that they were gone. And then they're like, oh yeah, Street Profits are going to be here. And, you know, Alpha Academy wanted the smoke. Profits get the win back, like their first win back. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that uh, Street Profits are back because this tag, uh, like, here's the thing with the Bloodline holding these titles. I don't know what because I don't want to fucking see Elias and Riddle win the titles, and I pray to God they fucking don't. They're not going. But to. no, we gotta do something with this tag division because yeah, what the fu- like what the fuck is going on? feels like they're kind of spinning the wheels with the tag titles and it's really just became like once i think they were just trying to get the usos to pass the longest reigning tag team title reign then now they're starting and i don't know if you noticed they're now starting to do more even though they're makeshift tag teams in elias and riddle and sheamus and drew so they're gonna have two title defenses next week so that's why i don't believe that they're i need sheamus and drew to win the tag team titles and become the new APA, like I talked about. I need them to hold court in the back, smoking cigars, drinking fucking pints of Guinness, and taking payment to protect people and just fun shit. Like, hey, use the door when there is only a door, and it's just like (laughs) all the APA shit. Again, I need pub room brawls, you know, pub room brawls, all of that shit. I need it. So, yes. Sheamus and Drew, tag team champions. Elias and Riddle, fuck that shit. Yeah, no, I'm spitting the fact that that's even a match next week. So it's a waste of time. What else are you spitting and or swallowing, Vince? 
I'm gonna swallow. This is a quick swallow. Uh, shout out to uh, Ar Fox having a match with Samoa Joe. He got a, a few licks in on Joe. Um, I like Ar Fox. I used to watch him like in the indie scenes, like right before the pandemic, when I was going to indie wrestling shows here in Chicago. So shout out to Ar Fox being signed by AEW and getting the getting some shine with Joe. So I thought the match was really fun. So it was a fun match, guys. Which is a plus, Will. I will give you that, that he has stopped using Orton's moveset. However, it's only a matter of time before he just starts doing Elias's moveset because... What's Elias' he's, moveset? He's, he is essentially just a ditto that only knows Mimic. <coughs> yeah, basically. I like that Katie got the, res- I got the reference. I, that's that's the best thing about it. Because I'm... Would... The, the ditto me? reference? Why I understand that reference? Well, because my whole thing is like I don't know how in tune you are with the Pokemon fan. I don't know how extent your Pokemon fandom goes because I don't think we've ever talked about Pokemon. So that's I mean, why we have, but not we we really have with I, me, Katie. Like Matt and I, I made I Katie look up how the people draw the Pokemon slutty, which is <laughs> oh my god, with you. you would think that would happen with my straight talk episode with Jizzy where we had uh very interesting uh six star picks oh yeah you, well, you guys picked six pokemon you wanted to fuck yeah jizzy's idea i went with it because well, throw I, jizzy under the bus it was jizzy's idea if you it's recall, your show yes and i don't yuck anyone's yum I don't and you shit. fully fucking embraced that idea and you were all about fucking all of the pokemon you had six <laughs> and it wasn't just like you're like i want to fuck a macho because have you seen the muscles on him why you're like want, fucking a gray Batista. Like I remember all the shit you said, Vince. <coughs> it all. But yeah. Uh, so, anyways, um, <laughs> oh, Wardlow yeah. showing up after that match, looking like a Hallmark snack. Ooh, Where's daddy. The leak, ma'am? That wasn't even really thirsting. He just looked really good. He just looked like he looked like a Hallmark movie. He was all bundled up. He literally was showing like no skin. I thought it was. Like, I, you know what? I'm not even going to say nothing because I'm just going to come off no, like yeah. a hater. Because you are a fucking Wardlow hater. I'm not a hater. It just You literally are. I am not. You literally I'm, are. I'm going to... I'm If I don't have anything nice to say, I'm going to not say anything at all going forward. Just fucking well, look at this. you growing the fuck up. Um, <laughs> I am not, however, going to not say anything nice Uh, if I have nothing nice to say. I'm going to say all the mean shit. No, uh, I'm, I'm Wardlow. I'm 100%. A riddle hater. Um, we know. I honestly like Wardlow's promo didn't really do it for me. Like I didn't feel like there was really anything there. It was nice to see him, but I, I, he should be angry. He should be out there. He should be attacking Samoa Joe and running for like. I don't want to see you on the set of a Hallmark movie just being like, I'm gonna get my belt back one day, young man. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. Uh, Maybe I mean, he shot that during Thanksgiving. And that's why he was wearing a sweater. You know, that's why he was no. all. Oh, yeah. They were in Indiana. So they were in JJ's home state. Yeah. Oh. It's chilly on Wednesday, according to her. She was cold. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I AR Fox is great. Samojo's great. I knew that. Like, it sucks when you do things like this, though, because, like, you know, Samojo is going to win. And yeah. it kind of takes, like, okay, yeah. I Listen, I get that it doesn't really matter because it's scripted and choreographed like who wins and but if i if i know i'm going into a match and like it's very very out like when they do like the squad like i don't give a fuck because i yeah. i'm not someone who can just sit down and appreciate the beauty of the moves like that that's not me so okay cool you gave me a great match or a fun match or uh okay match, whatever and the moves look pretty and you did the things and blah 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 but like you don't have my attention when you you do these things for the TNT title because I know who's going to win. It's very obvious who's going to win. There was no chance in my mind AR Fox was walking out TNT champion. Now, had AR Fox won, that would have then piqued my attention. I would have gone back and paid better attention to the match. I'm mean, like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? But right. it ended the way I thought it was going to end. Well, so. see, I'm, I'm with you there, Matt, on that kind of thing, because it's not a thing that's just singular to AEW, because WWE does that as well. When they oh, yeah. 
when they re- had the Emma return, she was in a championship match against Ronda Rousey. And yeah, it was great to see uh, Emma be back in the ring, be back in WWE. But it's almost kind of takes you away from the match because you know she's not going to beat Ronda. So you right. know it's 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 a similar effect to that to that extent. And also to eight, like I don't like debuting a wrestler or like officially signing a wrestler and then putting them in a the match where they're going to take a no. Let them get a win. Like as they start up, but like, I, like you think that'd be like simple concept, but I don't know. I just think it, you do a disservice to the wrestler by letting them take an early loss in their career. What up, Just? Uh, get I your podcast I'm... in the building. Katie, Katie my spitter words. swallow. Um, I'm going to swallow Candice LeRae and Dakota Kai's match. Hell of a match. Um, Dakota Kai legitimately had the longest week of her life (laughs) i mean she literally went to hell and war games then they did a live event the following night and then had this match on monday and then got the shit kicked out of her tonight like poor dakota but can's got a win can's got a dub i'm very happy i love candace uh i'm just i i was surprised with the amount of women's matches and things on Raw. And they definitely pulled an NXT from last week where they just had almost all of their women's <laughs> segments in a row, but they were all hitting. They were all like on point. So I was all about this match and they got decent time too. And they got the showcase yeah. everything. And Dakota Kai's fucking one scorpion kick she does and hits it perfectly every time is so good. So I'm swallowing this whole match. I love it. 10 out of 10. And again, this is like, you would expect Dakota Kai to go in there and win because damage control, but then Candice LeRae gets the win. And the whole thing's weird to me because like you thought Candice would be the final participant in yeah. War Games or Tegan Knox, and then they weren't, and it was Becky, and I get why it was Becky, but also mm-hmm. like either of those would have been cool and made sense and worked. So mm-hmm. like to have matches after the fact, it's like where the fuck were you? Why not have them come out at war games after the match and attack? Like w- decisions. I don't know, but the match was great, and I yeah, um, same. But um, no, I mean to kind of go off of what Kitty was saying, you know, just swallowing Dakota Kai. She was she's like the rag doll of war games matches. Um, and she's a trooper. So shout out to Dakota, and then she's she gave me what I wanted from Hangman. So like I mentioned earlier, shout. Out. Literally, whatever. So, who's it on now? Me. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. That's my job. You you do not need to pay attention. You just need to listen for. You got anything else, Vince or Vince spit or swallow? That's it. I got the rest. Dakota is Susie, and I am swallowing the Bloodline party on Monday Night Raw because officially everyone loves Sammy except for Kevin Owens. Every party needs a pooper, and Kevin Owens pooped on this party hard. Even though he was completely done with Sami Zayn, he's like, I don't want to ride with you anymore. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to look at you anymore. I don't want to masturbate to your picture anymore. None of it. I'm done with you completely. Don't leave me voicemails. No more sexting. None of it. Just cutting you off. I want the CDs back out of your car. We're over. Wow. Uh, he's not done with Jay. Uh, and then, then he has a match and defeats Jay Uso. Uh, which, again, like KO stunnered Roman in war games and was going to get the pin. And then Sammy did his thing and got hugs from Jay Uso. And Jay loves him and likes him now. We saw mm. more of that on SmackDown. Uh, he did. He double he did teamed. Hand- he he yeah. got double teamed by the Usos with the handshake. Yeah. Yes, yes, you got a double hand job from the Usos. <laughs> I'm with you, Matt. Um, swallowing everything, Bloodline, Sami Zayn. Uh, the match was fantastic. At War Games, everything on, on Raw was great. Everything on SmackDown was fantastic. They're all gelling together, even like the backstage stuff between Jay and Jimmy, where they're kind of like going back and forth about, like, are you cool with like Sammy, like, li- blatantly lying to your face? And then him just like being like, buddies with Sami Zayn. I thought it was fantastic. Um, 
But I am going to spit the fact that Kevin Owens being a sore loser, he like, wh- why are you being pissed at Sammy for double crossing you when your first night signed to the company, you double crossed your best friend? So, like, Kevin Owens has no legs to stand on. Sammy Zayn just giving him a taste of his medicine that he's been receiving a few times in their careers. Okay, first off, that is not a fair assessment. You cannot be like, hey, all these years ago, I did something fucked up because they have. They have had their issues throughout that time and fixed them. If you remember correctly, I'm pretty sure Sami Zayn ended up uh, aligning with Kevin Owens and saving him from an elbow drop from Shane McMahon through a table Yes, when when he was uh, originally against Kevin Owens in that story. Um, so they have, they have patched things up. They have. And now, it's not like if you were dating a girl, Vince... And early on in the relationship, she cheated on you. You guys decided to work things out. Everything was okay. And then five years later, you cheat on her and say, well, you can't be mad at me. Five years ago, I, you cheated on me. We're just even now. Like, that's not how that fucking works. Why not? Yeah, it's no. pro wrestling. It, I'm sure that's how it works. That's not. No. No. Chat, let us know. Is that how it works? Um, <clears throat> My question is. Because I was I was waiting for Vince to finish. Okay, does something feel off to you guys about this though? Like, so at at Survivor Series, Roman's like, "I'm gonna know everything I need to know when I look into Sammy's eyes," mm-hmm. and then he hugs Sammy, but he had a look on his face. Right. And then mm-hmm. on Raw, everyone's hugging Sammy, and they're trying to get Solo, who's just sitting there angry and is like full on Samoa Joe mode, and he doesn't go in for the hug immediately. He's just sitting there looking like an enforcer and then we think he's about to but then kevin owens music hits and he doesn't and then tonight same thing double hand jobs for sammy well solo's just chilling there and they're like all right sammy you're gonna go get us some food and take solo with you you're you're making a lot of enemies and the whole time solo's got this look on his face and even jay said well roman said he'd know everything he needed to know when he looked in sammy's eyes but he never told them that what he saw when he looked into sammy's eyes was that everything's gonna be okay and I feel like Solo is the only one that really knows what the fuck's going on right now. So and it's got me feeling iffy about Sammy's future with the bloodline. You yeah. want to weigh in first, Katie? Uh, yes. Um, obviously, uh, Sammy is about to get kicked out of the bloodline and is going to be heartbreaking. Because this has been the greatest soap opera in the last year, multiple years of WWE. This this has been a fantastic six month opera, six month soap opera, not opera. Um, but so, but that's the thing. Solo being the key. Before it was look at Jay in the background of everything Bloodline. Before all the war game stuff happened, now it's pay attention to Solo, because he he is the enforcer. He does what Roman tells him to do. He was brought in by the elders, which a lot of people are speculating that, like, it's The Rock and that's going to lead to something. I'm not going that far. I'm just thinking (laughs) Roman specifically had Solo brought into the bloodline and he's definitely going to be the one to... Change the dynamic of the bloodline. How that is, I leave it to the people involved. Um, but shit's gonna go down, and it's going to be heartbreaking and beautiful. Hold on, Vince. Hold on. I'm like, I'll, I'll give you a chance. I, I have to. So, Allison sure. in the chat said Solo is gonna be the one to turn on everyone, and then here it says Solo doesn't hold up the one sign. He doesn't participate in everything. If you are an avid listener of the Smack and Raw podcast, if you are a fan of the show, you know that when everyone was like, Jay Uso needs to turn on Roman Reigns and win the Royal Rumble and go to WrestleMania and fight Roman, and I said, no. No, he doesn't. He had his chance. He got his ass whooped. He's bitch mode now. Jay's done. And then this whole time, our boy Rick Havoc has been on the Jay Uso train of Jay Uso turning into... I have from day one, said, I do not want to see Solo in the bloodline, and if I do see Solo in the bloodline, it needs to be the fact that he is like, fuck you guys, I am Solo Sokoa because you guys left me behind, and he needs to come for Roman. 
I have always said that Solo on the main roster eventually needs to lead to Solo Roman because he is Solo Sokoa. I have Mm -hmm. been saying it and saying it and saying it, and I feel like Allison is with me. This is the proper course of action. Solo turning on the bloodline. Solo coming for Roman Reigns. Solo embracing the fact that he was left behind by the users. Okay, Vince, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so to just kind of touch up on everything that we've been talking about, this whole stuff about what's happening with Sammy, I think the Usos are fully behind on Sammy Zayn. They're in his corner. Solo, I'm not t- holding too much cadence into what he does and does not participate in because from the jump, he's never been like the most animated guy between all the members of the bloodline, even that includes Roman Reigns. Even Roman's a little bit more animated than, than Solo. Solo's always been kind of like that stoic dude in the background, just like folding his hands. I think what's going to end up happening is that we're going to build up more continuity, more cohesiveness between Jay and Sami Zayn. And when we least expect it is when the turn is going to happen because the Usos don't know what, like you guys mentioned, the Usos don't know what Roman saw in Sami's eyes. So they're assuming that it's like, oh, we're all good. We're all good with you. Those are my dogs. You know, we're good. Everything's fine. (laughs) I think it's going to be Roman that's going to sick Solo onto Sammy. I don't think Solo is going to go away from the bloodline anytime soon. I think at some point he should go solo, no pun intended, but he's still going to be like kind of like the hit hitman for for Roman. As Allison said, his name is Solo for a reason. And I, I think I've been we're saying that too much into the name. Thank you, Solo. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Solo. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Solo. You solo. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> Vince, better swallow. Uh, quick swallow here. I'm going to swallow Jake Cargill's TBS Championship celebration and the outfit she was rocking. Man, she, she looked like money, and she wore it all over her. I thought it was great. She she called out the baddies about hanging out with Kira Hogan. So I'm all about that energy. I'm still so confused about this whole Bow Wow, Jay Cargill stuff. I don't know where it's going to lead, what it's going to do for her, what's the payoff, but shout out to Jay Cargill. I have a theory. So obviously Bow Wow, I mean, he can because intergender wrestling exists and can be a thing, but Tony isn't really doing it. Um, mm-hmm. so realistically, in the scope of how professional wrestling works on nationally televised TV, for the most part, you're not going to have Bow Wow versus Jade Cargill in a singles match, which I think would be a terrible idea because Jade is not at the point where she could carry a celebrity through a singles match. No, do not do that. I do think her firing Kira Hogan as a baddie could be very interesting, and Kira Hogan could be the the avatar, the the person that Bow Wow uses uh, to fight and go after Jade Cargill in this feud. Um, <laughs> Ready Player won her bitch ass and sent it after Jade. Um, not bitch ass. I love Kira, and I was upset that she was fired from the baddies. I definitely she was probably the best baddie it. out of any baddie that she's I, I'm a Layla Gray fan here in the situation, so I will say Layla is top baddie in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. You need to, Kira's right there, and Red Velvet's somewhere way down here. <laughs> way at the bottom. On my baddie list. Um, just above Mark Sterling. <laughs> Um, but no, Jade looked fucking fantastic. Talk about where's the leak, ma'am. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> whoo. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I'm just saying, I wish there, like, I wish something more would have happened with the whole celebration. Yeah. yeah I mean, I agree. Jade looked incredible and it's just it's just not fair it's just disrespectful that she looks that good um but i really was expecting like someone to come out or something to happen not bow wow with his razor phone video like it's razor phone <laughs> that was the worst quality i've ever seen in my entire life it for was a video bad. on a televised program shit was terrible 
<coughs> yeah, it just it, it kind of felt like a little deflating because like she cut a really good promo and she put the baddies in line as she should. But my big issue here is that there doesn't really seem to be like that challenger for Jade right now. You know, that one we're waiting to see challenge her for that TBS title. It could be Kira Hogan. Who knows who it could be? But definitely not going to be Bow Wow. It could be Ruby Soho who returned on Dynamite. I, I hate Shout that she's to... back now because that it's always stuck in my head. Taz, did I, Taz did and I Kate not are say... both going to be singing it. Did I or did somebody not say Red Velvet when they were supposed to? Like I thought I said Red, 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 uh, Red Velvet. I thought you did. Okay. I don't know. I, I do not recall. Katie, spit or swallow? Um... I'm going to swallow uh, Indy Hartwell and Roxanne Perez on NXT. Fire match. A great match. I still wish the Indy was doing something more with like her character and everything, but I'm okay with what they're doing now because she's just like, you don't need to have friends in this business. You, you like clearly didn't learn from Cora Jade to Roxanne, who is an actual child who just wants to have friends in this business. Um, but no, I, I love both of them. And Roxanne has had hell of a year in NXT. So I love this match. And Roxanne got the win. So shout out. And Index did return at a house show. So also a swallow. There you go. Uh, yes, JJ, I did say she was at the bottom of my personal list of baddies. Uh, Red Velvet is not uh my You're favorite fine. baddie not necessarily wrestler baddie um per definition uh she, she uh, kira and layla trump her in that category all day every day uh because body yaddy 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 um not even close <clears throat> i agree with you um, I actually somehow fucked up my notes and put Cora defeats Indy and realized that that's not who the match was. It was Roxanne. Uh, however, I also like that they were playing up in like commentary how everyone's like, oh, they're saying Indy should be called up already. And blah, 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 all of those things. And Indy is going to be in the match next week to decide if she gets into the eliminator, the wild card, the wild card matchup. Um, I guess we'll talk about that. So I'll I'll save my thoughts for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm with you. You got anything, Vince? Uh, no, that was a great match. Uh, I loved it. it. Was probably my one of my favorite matches of the week. What? You got anything, Vince? No, it was a great match. It was probably one of my favorite matches of the week. I don't have anything on it, but I'm gonna fucking talk about it. <laughs> yes, yes, you have something on it. Go ahead. No, it was Carry one of your favorite matches of the week. Go ahead. Yeah. Just don't tell go. me you don't have anything and then just start talking. It's when people it's like the same thing when people go like, yeah, no, yeah, I uh it, it's that. It's that same thing. That's effect. a Chicago thing, and I do it all the time. I'm not gonna accept that. Um I, I also <laughs> do that and I'm not from Chicago. No, yeah, and yeah, no, we're a big Chicago thing. Um I'm gonna swallow the Miz. Uh losing to Dexter Loomis and Dexter Loomis getting his contract and his bag of money and everything that happened there. Uh listen, the Miz <laughs> tried to get out of his match again. Apparently, Adam Pierce still has a fucking job. So, like, good for you. Where the fuck have you been with everything that's been going on? Uh, he calls Miz on his bullshit. He's like, dude, you're fine. You're going to wrestle. No doctor is going to say you can't wrestle. Like, get the fuck out of here. Miz threatens to sue. Dexter catches Miz on his entrance on some slasher esque disappearing shit where we focus on the Miz. And every time the Miz turns around, Dexter's clothes disappears. Then he comes out of nowhere and attacks the Miz. And I fucking loved it. Uh, no sold a fucking vice grip on his head. Yeah, that's your thumbnail. I suggested um, it. Miz <clears throat> attacks him from behind and then takes money from the kid after the match. And then uh, the reason I was laughing earlier is I was getting to this in my notes and I read it and somehow my phone auto corrected Gargano to Garbanzo. So he's now Johnny Garbanzo <laughs> beans. <laughs> Uh, so Johnny Garbanzo being super kicks the Miz and then returns the money to the child that he took the money from because Dexter was out here just handing money out. Now, somebody did notice that there were some people in the crowd that Dexter skipped over that I'm not quite OK with. Um, that's the thing. But there was also one kid checking to see if the money was real. 
That'd be me, 100%. Just... <laughs> yeah. And you said Actually, Johnny Gargano was going to be... Johnny Garbanzo Beans. I'm sorry. You said Johnny Garbanzo Beans was going to be sneaky about everything. He didn't get involved at all. Matt said he just didn't trust Johnny. That's all I, Matt That said. is true. I said there's something about this that... And I, I just said the same thing about Solo. So for all I know, Vince is right, and Solo's just going to be the enforcer, and I'm wrong. But my, my spidey sense was tingling. My tummy was rumbling, and something was telling me this ain't right. <laughs> all right, Winnie the Pooh, take it easy. There's all the gumbronzo beans in you. Take it easy, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I guess maybe the title of this week could be Johnny Garbanzo Beans. Garbanzo Beans. I think it's funny. Your phone uh, should autocorrect it if you don't spell it right, Vince. So <laughs> yeah, mine did. Check. We'll see. I'm going to check. Well, well, my autocorrect is in Spanish and English, so sometimes words in English get autocorrect to Spanish, so it's a little messy. Mine didn't. <laughs> so. I don't know how that happened then. Um, <laughs> you probably were just <laughs> typing more letters than you needed to, and it said, yeah, he meant garbanzo. <laughs> I mean, gargano, garbanzo, neither here nor there. Vince, unless you, you guys have anything him. about... Loomis getting a contract and everyone just joining me and being happy that Loomis got his contract. Let's give Dexter Loomis his flowers, money, and contract. And also Adam Pierce. Like we're speaking of returns that nobody gave a fuck about. Apparently, Adam Pierce came back. Everyone was returning this week on on yeah. in wrestling. There's like a lot of returns. Um, return to the format and spit or swallow for me, Vince. Gonna go back to NXT and we briefly talked about it with uh the Cora Jade Rock Roxanne Perez match. I'm gonna spit the Iron Survivor participants for both the men and the women. More for so for the men than the women. I like Carmelo Hayes being in it, and that's about it. Uh I really wished uh Tony D'Angelo was in there, or I don't know, just like anyone else. Other than Grayson Waller, JD McDumdum, and Joe Gacy. Like, I'm not a fan of the five people included in that. Well, the four people included in that match. Right now, it's between Von Wagner, Andre Chase, and Axiom. I'm rooting for Andre Chase, but that's only because I find him very entertaining. Then, if you go over to the women's side, that one looks a bit better because it has Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez, Zoe Stark. Kenna James just seems like an odd name to have in there. So I'm not a fan. I don't know. I just like, I don't know. I'm not a fan. I, I, I can't get into the sexy library, man. Uh, and then you look at the wild card triple threat match. You have Wendy Chu, Indy Hartwell, Fallon Henley. Don't care about. But Wendy Chu and Indy Hartwell, if you plug those in and take out Kenneth James, I think that's a fantastic five-person match right there. Um, the men's one just leaves a lot to be desired. So I'm swallowing the women's, spitting the men's, and just gargling the selection of some of these competitors all right so uh i do not know the difference between chickpea and a garbanzo bean i honestly don't even think i know what a fucking garbanzo bean is i just know it exists uh I, yes tim i agree the obvious winners are probably going to be mellow and roxanne that makes the most sense to me mm -hmm. um i'm spitting the men's match period outside of mellow because yeah, well, yeah. My girl in the Legends meeting that Getcha was talking about in the comments right now, Alundra Blaze, who still has yet to release those Playboy pictures that she has that she teased us with years ago, um, <laughs> still on that. said Tony D'Angelo. And Tony said he's cleared to wrestle next week. And Tony D didn't get the fucking match. And that is some bullshit. Like Over Von Wagner, over Axiom, over Joe Wayne Gacy, over... JD McDun dun dun over fucking everyone but Mello and maybe Andre Chase. Tony D should be in that fucking match. Uh look, we've had a uh, rough oh, hold up, hold up, wait, hold wait, up. Wait, be, wait. Before you be before you make an, a, a face or say anything, let me just finish my thought. It has to do with the comment on the screen. Do you get the joke? I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat everything so there's not dead silence. Uh, Will said, do you know the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? And I said, no. And the answer is, Will's never had a garbanzo bean on his face before. Oh, well, I you're one of a kind. I here so much. <laughs> but he has had a chickpea on his face before. Uh, 
Yeah, so oh, anyways. Oh, man. You know, shut the fuck out of here with HBK wants to be keep him safe. And also, I'll, I'm going to let you do your thing, Vince, but if you shit on Tony D, we're going to have a fucking problem. Okay, look, like I said, just, just bear with me. So, look, I know the history has been tumultuous at best between you and I, the Tony D and Escobar gang warfare territory thing. But I will admit, out of any of the names in the NXT male roster list that isn't already in the title picture or Carmelo Hayes, Tony D absolutely should be in that that uh, that number one contenders match, that uh, Sir Iron Survivor Challenge. I keep forgetting the name of it. But look, I don't personally care for Tony D, but I do recognize that out of everyone that could be selected, he is above Joe Wayne Gacy. He is above Grayson Waller. He's definitely above JD McDundum. I don't know if this is first hand or second hand embarrassment from Allison with Will. Oh. Well, second hand would be she works with Will and she's embarrassed by him. First hand would be she's the chick. I don't know which <laughs> one it is. So uh can't say both because we don't know. Um figure that out for yourselves. I got your Tony D. <laughs> uh, I got some D for you. Um yeah, so I'm spitting that whole thing. The women's match, it's better. I like all. It, it's better. I like all the competitors in it, and Mandy needs some new faces to beat or lose to. So yeah, but Roxanne's the obvious choice, in my opinion, out of that group. Um, I've, if it's Indy and Indy loses, then she gets called up. And this, honestly, if the winner of this Iron Survivor Challenge loses. I feel like this is going to feel like a huge waste of time to have had this match. It, yeah. Exactly. And th that's honestly where I'm feeling with both of these matches. That's why when they announced them, I wasn't really too high on them because as you can see, the competitors are, are sl they're slim pickings in terms of legit challengers for the, both these champions, not only Mandy Rose, but Braun, Braun Breaker as well. I was about to say Strowman, but Braun Breaker as well. Cause who on that roster, aside from Carmelo Hayes, can you really see Braun Breaker dropping the title to? And you, there's no one. And they tried how long for Von Wagner, and they can go suck a fat fucking dick on Jurassic Gym. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just don't think anyone's got his character yet because he sucks. He doesn't have a character. Katie, you didn't get to talk about any of this. You got thoughts on? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Katie. Men's and women's people were getting their face peed on. Shit got crazy. I want to Wait, give you a chance. To talk. Question, question, Kitty. Are you are you drinking an RC cola or are you drinking a Pepsi? It's Pepsi. Okay. What the? Fuck? He's like, I got Pepsi money, bitch. <laughs> like, I do have Pepsi money. To me, it's RC <clears throat> cola, Pepsi, and then Coca Cola. In terms Who of the taste. fuck puts RC cola above Pepsi? We're moving on, <laughs> Katie. Please talk about Iron Survivor Challenge. <laughs> Um, so the obvious answer for the men's is 100% Carmelo Hayes. If Carmelo doesn't win this, then this was a fucking waste of time. We have been saying for months that Carmelo needs to be the one to take the title off Braun, now possibly Apollo. Um, and if he doesn't, then just send him straight to the main roster because he's it. Melo, don't miss. Um, I was honestly very surprised that there's um all heels um in the men's there's not a single face really which i didn't even realize that carmelo hayes jd mcdumbass grayson waller <laughs> joe wayne gacy four heels. Oh, man um so it's gonna have to be andre chaser axiom there's no sh there's no shit in hell that there's gonna be fucking von wagner in this match or i will lose my mind um, the women's, I'm happy with this. I'm okay with it. Uh, I, at first I was expecting Fakita, but after all of the things that happened in the main event, doesn't surprise me. Um, Zoe Stark makes sense. Roxanne and Cora, who have been like two golden geese the past yeah. year for NXT. Uh, I like having Keanu James in there. It's a, she's definitely been working her ass off the past few months and i don't know where the hatred for fallon henley comes in at from vince but oh, Fallon's it's not, fantastic it's not hatred i just don't care for her just because she is with Briggs and jensen that's yeah. part of the appeal though like 
they really need to focus more on playing up the fact that Briggs is or Jensen Jensen is a giant virgin again. And yeah. like what they were doing with them before they got away from that, because that was the whole charm. Fallon is fan. The I love the bartender. <laughs> um and I love doing that. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just not a I'm just not a fan. Uh and then it's just because I she just shows up and I just don't care one way or another. It's like I'm not even hating. I want to like I like her more than Keanu James, but it it, it just kind of feels like all the newer women that got brought into NXT with the exception of like uh Roxanne Perez and then and the Kid Alliance have really failed to like stand out for me. Like they just kind of feel like generic were like creative wrestlers to me. I, I I'm pretty sure Justin isn't, but Allison so while we've been talking, Will, who I agree with said Dr. Pepper over everything. Um <laughs> uh, just because no sugar Dr. Pepper tastes better than anything else, no sugar. Um I will say that. Uh Some if it was regular pop, RC I'm a, I'm a Pepsi guy. Um but uh just said get yo RC Cola, it's all about Fago, and then Allison said Peach Fago. Um Allison, are you are are you a juglet? What? Because honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you were. Like, do you ride for ICP? Because now, like that, I'm uh, I'm looking at the and then the Fago, and it all makes sense to me. I'm pretty sure Justin isn't. He might be. He might be a closet uh, 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 juggalo. Um, <laughs> see, maybe he is. Maybe he's, maybe he's a closet juggalo, and I didn't know that about him. <laughs> Well then, now we got. I don't know how we got there. From and Henley. now we're talking about the strongest women's uterus championship again because ICP came back up. Um, a lot of pee talk tonight. Like, let's <laughs> away from that. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow. Uh, um, Something. Just, mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, it, since we briefly brought them up, because they're going to well. One of them is going to be in the Iron Survivor Challenge. I'm swallowing Fallon Henley and Keanu James. That match was pretty good. And I'm happy that they're continuing this. It's another women's feud. No title involved. It's just Kiana trying to take Fallon's bar. Which, disrespectful. That's her family's bar. Her family, uh, she grew up in that bar, basically. Uh, so I like that that's like a little storyline in NXT for it. That's not a good and thing, though. What? Growing up at a bar? That's not necessary. I grew up at a bar, bitch. I kind of did, too, actually. Well, My then. grandparents owned a restaurant with a bar, and I grew up in that restaurant. I would go behind the bar. I would get little shot glasses. I'd fill them with Coke from the little spray Coke thing. And I'd do, like... I, I basically grew up in a bar. And look how I turned out. Fucking fantastic. So what do you got against people who grow up in bars? Well, technically, that's a restaurant with a bar in it, not a full-on bar. That's what that, we don't know. We don't know what that if Fallon's isn't like that. Like, it probably is. Most places are bar assuming. restaurants. That's a lot of assuming there. It was called Biamonte's, Justin. Um, it was in Chicago Heights. Anyway, I agree with Katie and I enjoy the Fallon Kiana story and the interesting, like outside of NXT, she's a real estate agent and like they have lives and other things going on. And that's where the feud comes because you don't see a lot of that shit anymore. Like, mm-hmm. so I've been enjoying it and I, I enjoy both of them in multiple ways. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> yes, swallow. Yes. Uh, last swallow for Raw since everyone just moved the fuck on. I'm gonna swallow uh, Alexa's lack of interest in being part of everything that went on, uh, during the interview with Team Bianca and after the match because everyone's like shitting on Alexa. Oh, she doesn't seem like she cares. She's standing off the like, she's standing off the side. She's like all of this shit, but the Bray stuff's going on in the background. I. I'm going to be 100% honest. I will be furious if she just joins back up with Bray and there are no consequences for what the fuck happened at WrestleMania because yeah. I will be. I will be. There is a director of long-term storytelling and he needs to know what the fuck he's doing and that needs to be a thing. However, if this is Uncle Howdy like recruiting Alexa or he was the one that originally got Alexa to turn on Bray or what a... 
if this is going somewhere and this is getting back into this Alexa doing what she likes it. to do, <clears throat> it's not just Alexa randomly just joining back up with Bray, then I'm good with it. And I'm interested. Like, I want to know where this is going. I want to know. And her lack of enthusiasm, her, her just not being, it, it's part of the story that's going on. So I'm good with it. So that's a big swallow. Anything yeah. that leads to Alexa Bliss changing her theme song because it's it's terrible. It's, it's not good. I'm sorry. It's do you have something good. against Avril Lavigne? Do I look like I'd be an a- Avril Lavigne fan or yeah, enjoy listen. her music? Hundred no. percent. I don't judge. I don't judge a book on its cover. Are events, you are you just so. not doing comments anymore, Vince? What's going on here? No, because I thought. I thought we agreed like a while ago that you just focus on that. You'd be doing that. No. Because when then we... he's okay. Never mind. Neither here nor there. I don't even know. We, what I'm yeah. Anymore. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh Vince, better swallow. Uh swallowing the match, spitting the results. Big fat L for Mexico again. This is the third fat L Mexico tick this week. Lucha Bros, uh, Death Triangle, they lost that uh, match, uh, the third match in the best of seven series against the Elites. Uh, still not fan of the Elites, new theme song. Matt Jackson should not be kicking out of shit like he's 2005 John Cena. I'm over that fucking shit. Ray Phoenix needs to get with the fucking programming and start smashing people with hammers because that's how they've gotten their two wins. I don't care. I want a clean sweep. I'm spitting the fact that Kenny Omega, for whatever reason, wanted to get on the fucking mic after the match and be like, oh, this is this is not a sweep. You thought it was. It's going to be a reverse sweep. Uh, Goodbye. Good night. Bye bang. Bye. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. I can give a fuck. Like, I was I was pissed. Like, I was pissed. I hated that. I, I don't want any wins for the elite. No wins whatsoever. Boy, oh boy, are you in for a fucking shock then when this goes tied and then it comes down to the last fucking match. It's going to, but I'm not a fan of it. You don't Shout out to Kofi Weedson, who's in the chat. He agrees with the hammer shit. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I just... I'm spitting the fact that the Elite won a match, and now Savannah and all the other Elite super fanboys are happy. Um, in general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just I hate the theme song. I'm like... Oh, I love Wayward Son. It's a great fucking song. It makes me think of Fantastic Supernatural. Team. I don't. I, wish they weren't I don't it like it associated with the elite. Let me let me preface that. I hate the song with the elite. Like I think it's it doesn't it doesn't fit. I'm not a fan. But uh, also, I'm with Katie. I agree. We all knew this was going to go tied. And if you didn't think it was going to go tied, like I would have been happily surprised if it was a clean sweep for Death Triangle. That would have no, been dope, but I would have loved it. But no. I knew from the get go. It's a best of seven. It's going to go tied, and then there's going to be a final match, and more than likely, the elite are going to win. They better fucking not. Uh, look, I I knew full well best of seven. It should first off. I'm still pissed that it's even the best of seven because, as far as I understood, it was just the one match at uh, what was it? Um, what full gear? Yeah, at full yeah. gear. Then all of a sudden, it became a best out of seven series. Like why? Why you took the L? Take the L. Hold it. Go go into the locker room. Go in at the back of the line. I just don't want any success for the elite whatsoever. And I wanted a clean sweep, even though I know it was unrealistic to see it. So my best my best hope here is that they get that seventh win, that that seventh match win. Uh, it is a shot at CM Punk. I agree, Kofi. Uh, everything that they're doing is a shot at CM Punk because they said move on, but they fucking can't. We're not going to get into that again. Um, no. yeah, I agree. Uh, Katie, you got any thoughts on the elite and death triangle or you want to spit or swallow? Um, what I'll say about the match, I mean, death triangle, I mean, you can say what you want about the elite, but like, do you put them with certain people? They can't have a good match, especially when you have death triangle as their opponents, Mm -hmm. the match is going to be fine. And I will give them props. Each match has been a little different. True. It's three matches in a row. That have been a little different. I give all six men props for that. Um, I really just wanted a clean sweep for Death Triangle. That would have been fantastic. That would have been a very surprising twist. But I just it's want to e- rub all it in the face elite wrestling. Yes, like, it just 
the elite. I, again, maybe this is just me. Like, this is just sour grapes on my end, and maybe I'm just a hater, and I'll full on be an elite hater. And it's not because I'm signing with Punk. It's just they just annoy the fuck out of me. Kenny more so than the Bucks. But it's like, you can't do the shit you did as an EVP and then come back and then get your titles back, even if it takes you seven matches to do so. I'm not a fan of it. I mean, they I can because they should. they're EVPs. <laughs> I talked about this with Warren in DMs a little bit, and I'm with you, Vince. Like, It's not that, like, don't get me wrong, we're, I'm from Chicago. Um, I, I do like CM Punk, but I'm not like a huge CM Punk fan. We talked about this last week mm -hmm. and all that. However, it's the the elite fan base that makes me fucking hate the elite. Um, and, like it's like I don't care if this pisses people they're off. They're like Swifties. No, no, that's not where I'm going. Uh, they're like uh, MAGA Trumpers. Like the harder they ride for their fucking president, the more I hope he never gets fucking reelected. And the harder these elite fans push for fucking the elite and suck their dicks and talk about how fantastic they are the less i like them and the less i want to see them on my tv i don't care if it's all elite wrestling or not yeah yeah i'm with you there. I, I love how you guys just made that face as soon as i compared the elite fans to fucking trumpers not in any sort of political sense it's just like they are so behind. in terms of the toxicity the and the elite can't do any wrong yeah toxicity that they're driving me away from even giving a fuck about the elite because they're just so diehard for them. Not I've, calling the elite racist or anything like that. I know. Well, I've never met a Weezer fan. Ever. I like Weezer. I have. I don't hear people publicly like professor love for Weezer though. This is great. Katie spit or swallow. Yeah, let's get back on her right here. Um <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I don't know if it's... Okay, so Dijak happened. That's a thing. We'll, we'll talk about it. It was originally a gargle, because, like, yeah, he's back. And he actually did hit his finisher this time. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what it looked like. I, did he actually? I'm assuming he did. Um, Who did he wrestle? Dante Chen? Dante Chen, who yeah, we haven't seen match. in how long? Mm -hmm. Sweeter. Sweeter, I love sweetener. <clears throat> Listen, let Go Katie ahead. finish. No, let Katie finish, Vince. Uh, no, we it's fine. It's not fine because you keep getting interrupted by people while you're trying to go off and talk about your subject, and I'm not going to allow this to happen. Katie, please continue with Dijak and Dante Chen. I mean, like I said, Dijak's back, cool, because he is fantastic in the ring, and we all have been waiting for Dijak. Um, but it, this um this character is just I was excited at first, but now I just don't care because if you just let him be the Dijak he was before T Bar, then he was a star. Like the matches he had with Keith Lee, he could have gone for the title, any title at the time. So if he gets rid of the racist cop character, then. He can go for the title. He can you, be that. Do you see the vision now? I do. Because Beast he showed up with his head. own brand of justice. Like I tried to tell you guys last week, you guys, I don't see it. Now he's beating up Dante Chen. He attacked Wes Lee. And in his post match promo, outside of Braun Breaker, who's champion, he only named minorities and the people he wanted to beat up. Yeah. I saw that as a very diverse group of NXT roster that it took up until Braun, Braun Breaker to mention a white wrestler on the roster. So I like to give kudos to NXT for a very diverse roster. And he did get, go face to face with Tony D in the backstage in the parking lot, backstage area, parking lot, parking lot. Yeah. And it sounded like he was going to be a cop hired by Tony to perpetrate crimes, which makes him a corrupt racist cop. Oh, so all cops. <laughs> it's... For the most part. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm spitting Dijak's new character. I'm with you, Katie. Um, however, and this might surprise you guys, I am going to swallow the big body Javi segment just because despite having BBC, he got turned down repeatedly 
and I am loving this backstage interviewer, uh, Mackenzie Mitchell. Is that correct? I, I always confuse yeah, her. Yeah, I Sarah love Schreiber. her. Uh, She's great. But I'm learning who she is now because before I probably would have said Sarah Schreiber and been wrong. Now she's <laughs> differentiating herself. Uh, but yeah, no, everything Javi did leading into like, oh, Axiom's okay and he can actually have his match. I, I actually really enjoyed this segment. I did. I love the, the BBC, the big body cologne, like all for it. Uh, the big body pillow, which is actually a thing. Like the whole thing, and her just being turned off by him. Enjoyed the shit out of it. It's it's different. I didn't really care big about big body Javi, but you know what? If he keeps doing stuff like this, it's gonna catch on. It's gonna feel like the Andre Chase Chase University stuff when it started. Where now I just love to see Andre Chase curse everybody out. Uh, so it could be something. It could be something. This could be the thing. He feels like uh, an NXT wrestler from back before the network era where he was just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And right now this is sticking, at least for Matt. Well, what I was going to say was I didn't give a fuck about Big Body Javi until this week. I know Katie yeah. was kind of getting on board with at least the Mackenzie Mitchell stuff the last couple weeks. She's but. just a great backstage interviewer because she doesn't take shit from anybody. She, when he this was running week. down his list, he was just like, uh, or when, yeah, when he was running down his list, she was just like, well, he's injured. You can't wrestle him. And like, she wouldn't say <laughs> the names of people. Yeah. But she just kept shutting him down. She doesn't take anyone's shit. I love, it's like the same thing with like Renee on AEW. Like, they just don't, they're sick of everyone's shit. And they're like, this is, this is my time to do this. I am in charge of this segment. So what was her, what was her name again? Mackenzie Mitchell. Mackenzie Mitchell. She just has really good timing, comedic timing, and she's really good with like delivering her lines, and like she has really good chemistry with with Javi. It's just it's funny. It's funny to me. So we'll see. Uh, Vince, better swallow. Gonna swallow the match like I did previously, spitting the result because this is the third loss that Mexico took this week. Because we got to the finals of the SmackDown World Cup and we took an L to Ricochet. But you know, shout out to Lucha Underground, King Cuerno versus Prince Puma. We've seen this match. This was a fantastic match. This was really cool, especially when they did the spot where they're doing walking the top tightrope on the barricade and they hit the, what was it, like a Hurricane It was great. The match, everything. I loved every single bit of it. I wished and hoped. Santos Escobar got the win here, but the match was great. Loved it. And then Ricochet getting his moment to celebrate with his uh, giant trophy and then getting confronted by Gunther, setting up the match. All good shit. I still don't understand how Ricochet is America, but uh, neither here nor there. Um, he was born in the United States. Is he? Yeah. Really? Yeah. For some reason, I thought with like the Prince Puma thing, and like, wasn't he like the first champion of Lucha Underground? Uh, he was one of their first champions, but that was the thing with Lucha Underground, they put everyone under masks, so yeah. everyone was almost every single wrestler was under a wrestling mask, except for Johnny Mundo. But everyone was wrestling under a wrestling mask, and I was just kind of like Santos Escobar was in there at with the wrestling mask. Everyone, um, Jeff Cobb was in there with a wrestling mask, so it was just a thing. Uh, oh, you mean the Great Ocon's tag team partner that no one cares about? Yes, yes. yes. If the Great He's Ocon great wrestled, Ocon. he would be the Great Ocon with the wrestling mask. It was a Lucha okay. Underground thing. No, I just I I thought with him like being kind of the face of Lucha Underground and everything, and the way if I remember correctly, he was presented. I thought that he was Hispanic not born in america no because he has the dark skin complexion so he could pull off being latino and he never really spoke at all i think he had a mouthpiece i think it might have been uh probably a good thing <laughs> uh fuck um conan was actually his mouthpiece and lucha on the ground makes sense yeah um I, I really like the Legato Lounge package ahead of time, so the loss kind of sucks, but... The Lounge was dope. I thought everything... Something in the Vega. Fantastic, by the way. Jesus. I think the only one that feels awkward in the whole thing is... Uh, 
uh, Joaquin Wilde is the only one that feels like he's awkward when he says or talks or delivers any kind of like promo with Legato. Like Santos, cool as all fuck. Swag everywhere. Selena, amazing. Even uh, even uh, Cruz del Toro, Raul Mendoza, whatever his name is now, his delivery on his lines in Spanish, he has a very deep voice. Fucking cool. Joaquin Wild kind of feels like the nerdy dude that just kind of chills with his cousins. Oh, he is the nerdy dude that just chills with his cousins. Uh, he was what DJ Z or whatever over yeah. in Impact. Yeah, burr, 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 burr. Chicago boy, but um, <clears throat> whatever. Speaking uh, Kate... of speaking of Illinois, before we want to move on because you were talking about where he was born. Ricochet was born in Alton, Illinois, but he's built from uh, Paducah, Kentucky. Really? Yeah. I don't even so... know where the fuck Alton, Illinois is. Me either. Also, it's Illinois, not Illinois. Whatever. It's not plural. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow? Um, uh, I'm going to swallow. I don't want to mispronounce her name. Isla Dawn? No, Lyra Valkyria. Or Val, Val, yeah, I think Valkyria. Lyra Valkyria. Yeah. Valkyria. Yeah. No, no, it's it used to be Afi Valkyrie, and now it's Lyra Val- Valkyria. Which you've talked about, I think, like last week or two weeks ago. And then here, see, they're all fucking listening to our show. They have to be. Well, if they were listening to our show, they would have got rid of fucking Valhalla and put her where she belonged and not given her this <sighs> intro package and sent her to NXT. But hey, I will swallow her being here because she was great in NXT UK. And I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. Yeah, I mean, this, this vignette this promo package whatever you want to call it it has me excited and they're just um adding to yeah fuck you kim um just adding to the um stacked women's roster already that they have why'd you make that face when i said fuck you kim because <laughs> i didn't because get the reference at first because I, I didn't, didn't get the reference the tweet no, and then i realized either. it was probably something she tweeted out yeah yeah she, it was it was that picture and then she was like Oh, that sounds like Taya Valkyrie, and everyone's just like, "Bitch, shut the fuck up!" Like, yeah, you did a lot for the women's division in multiple companies, but your husband, I'm pretty sure, is racist, and then you just are very much supporters of shitty, shitty people. So nobody gives a fuck about your opinions. Fuck off, you him. Yeah. Uh, that was my last swallow for NXT. I agree with you, Katie. Did not know all that about Gail Kim. I just there, there are things I know about Gail Kim. Um, most of them involve her naked uh, on repeated counts, um, new and old. Um, she's done those things, uh, but that I, I mean, I knew like her impact stuff and all of that, but her husband and all that—that that is all news to me. So interesting. Yeah, I'm like ninety percent sure her husband is racist or something along those lines. Also, she gets very defensive when she gets called out. Yeah, she does. I know Vince is going to say that this didn't happen, but I am spitting the JAS BCC sit down because of the JAS and because it can no longer be the British or Blackpool Combat Club, British Blackpool, same shit. Um, Because the only person from Blackpool in the combat club probably isn't in the combat club anymore might be dead um no, on tv dead. um so also like i just i don't why is this still a thing why is this going on i don't give i don't want to see like yeah okay i'd love to see claudio take the title off jericho but like i don't give a fuck about say big money at menards or his stupid tag team partner <laughs> uh wheeler yuda and daniel garcia need to fucking end their feud Mm-hmm. JS versus Blackpool Combat Club needs to come to an end. Like, I don't, don't. Didn't they already do uh, Blood and Guts already? They did. Yeah. Where um, are they still going? A few things about this. I think at Final Battle, this probably will be the last match between Garcia and Yuta, even though the match is going bang. I'm not paying for a fucking Ring of Honor pay per view, but the match is <laughs> flat. Um, it, I agree. JAS. BBC, BCC, whatever you want to call it, uh, needs to be done. The fact that 
Claudio is probably going to lose and then have to join this shit show of a society is pointless and a waste of time. Um, what did I also have to say? Um, JAS is the worst thing going in AEW. That's just facts. Yeah, 100%. <sighs> And if you like it, that's fine. Good, good for you. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Uh, you not. and I don't enjoy the same things. Not you, Vince. I'm talking to the listeners. Sports. The people. No. Entertainers. It's the only good thing that they have, and only because you can mock it. <laughs> it's one of the very few skills I have. So, yes, that is my spit, Vince. Uh Jericho wasn't there, so do you have thoughts on it, or do you want to spit a swallow? No, I just saw the whole thing. I don't really care about it, and I fast forward through the whole thing. So, okay. yeah, spit or swallow. Really... I think I'm done. I think we ran through everything. I still have stuff. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Going back to SmackDown, I'm a swallow. Kofi Kingston being announced as the first participant in the Men's Royal Rumble. <laughs> Then Imperium goes in and gets in his face and he tries to pick a fight with one of them because Xavier's not there. And then Gunther comes out of nowhere and it's like, okay, you versus me. And he calls out, it's like, so what you just like hiding in the background and then you creep in? Like, like I loved it. The match was cool. Uh Gunther Kofi slapped. Kofi got slapped, and then he got hit with a new finisher. So shout out, shout out, shout out to everything Kofi Gunther. Uh, I'm swallowing that he got a new finisher, and it's not the fucking spear. Thank God, WWE, for not giving somebody else the goddamn spear. I don't think Gunther. Oh, man, a spear from Gunther would be... Don't even, don't put that out in the world, because then it's going to be a thing. It, no, he's chopping people. He doesn't need to be spearing people. He can literally chop them in half. All you have to say is, oh my job. god, a spear from blah 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 blah. They're like, that's that is correct. It'll be brutal. Everyone do this. Fucking I I it's the spear what? has become my least favorite move in wrestling. I know it has. I know. I know. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, go ahead. Continue. Um, what I was going to say. Uh yeah, the it, Kofi announcing himself for the rumble. You know, a whole like month and some change before the rumble even happens. Iconic, good for Kofi. That means that man is already planning his spot, and hopefully, it goes well this time. And he had a he had a great match with Gunther. Like, it's I was not expect I really was expecting like him versus like Giovanni Vinci or Ludwig, but him versus Gunther was something I was actually surprised yeah. about, and I loved it because if you can't have Xavier there, still utilize. Kofi in some way, shape, or form. So I'll I agree for sure. Um, what was his spot last year? Because I know he 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 didn't succeed in it. But what was the spot last year? Do you remember? He, mm-hmm. I think it was when he tried to jump onto the barricade, but his foot slipped and he touched uh... just barely. Oh, he was trying to do the John Morrison spot. I think so. Because John Morrison did the Spider-Man thing onto the barricade and then like jump back in. Mm-hmm. So I think okay, it might be that one. Yeah, I just remember him just like being on the barricade and then everyone around just like looking down and then they all snitched that his foot touched and then mm-hmm. him just being sad. Yeah, the all fucking right. fans snitched on them. All right. Whoever all right, yeah. was listen, <clears throat> you can do all the bullshit you want on straight talk. I know Vince is here. That's not no. We're no, no, no Golden State Warriors, but no bass. We don't do that here. That is straight talk exclusive. I don't care who's on the fucking show. I don't care what city I'm broadcasting from. No, shame on you. Bad chat. Bad. <laughs> That's Jesus and and Justin. I know who the fuck it is. Shame on you. Can I spit um, rampage because the bulls lost? It's not your turn. Uh <laughs> <clears throat> your turn's over. It's Katie's turn. Katie spit or swallow. I'm going to I'm gargling the MJF belt reveal 
uh, tagging Miller Meagle thing. More so the fact that I really, this week, I've been okay with Max's promos the past few weeks, but this week it just really felt like it was dragging on and mm-hmm. taking forever to get to the new belt reveal, which the belt isn't that bad. If you look at it from a distance, it really just looks like brown leather, mm-hmm. which it looks good with. I really just thought it was until they zoomed in, but I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Burberry, it's Max. It makes sense. Um, I knew as soon as he started like walking or no, as soon as he put the brass knucks in his hands, I knew he was about to clock the shit out of William Regal. You can just tell. Once well, a snake, always a snake. It's it's MJF. He's gonna do it. But the fact that people kept saying Regal felt like a character out of Family Guy had me rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn it. And then Brian coming out with one boot. It, it was a whole thing. It, like, And I liked that part. But it, it just the Max's promo was just taking too long. Yeah, um, I'm with you there, Katie. I thought the belt was fine. Honestly, I don't fucking personally care. Like, I'm gonna spit Tony Schiavone. Was like, he's desecrated our championship. I'm like, bitch, your championship's been around for like three years. You're acting like William Regal when John Cena put Spinner on the WWE title. <laughs> just, just shut up. Everybody gets their own custom titles. <laughs> it's not that bad. It looks cool. Uh. Fucking Daniel Bryan had a hemp championship for, for God's sake. Like, let everyone have their custom championships. I'm all about custom championships. I did also think he kind of ran a little too long. I'm I'm kind of sick and tired of him talking about like the bidding war of 2024. I really, really, really hope that come 2024, WWE is really not interested in him. He actually there's no bidding war, and he's just been talking about this whole thing. Um, I I think it's kind of like lame that he always like oh jolly old and Saint Nick and my Go buddy trips. I don't know. Uh, I'm swallowing Tony Schiavone kind of piece of shit. On <laughs> he really did. Just from Jesus. Just out of nowhere, he was like, "You piece of shit." I was like, oh "My God, Tony Schiavone." <laughs> so I'm I'm with you both or Katie, I guess, as far as the guard because I was swallowing everything that they did to set up this. Like Daniel Bryan had his match. He was hurt. He was in the trainer's room. Mox got kicked mm-hmm. out of the building, which is why Regal was even there. And then why MJF was able to turn on Regal, you know, because Daniel Bryan couldn't come out to save him because he was in the trainer's room. Like, all of that was great. Promo went on way too long. Um, the, all the WWE stuff and my favorite con, Nick, and blah, 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 blah. Honestly, the way he shat on the belt, I expected more than just a different strap. And yeah. that was a letdown to me. When he revealed it, it was yeah. the same belt. It was just a different strap. I was like, okay, because like I, we've got the smoking skull belt, we've got the spinner belt, we've got you know U.S. and WWE spinner belt. Like we've got all these cool like acts. Like the hemp championship was like it was the same design, but the whole belt the material was everything was different. Everything was different. This was the same belt with a different strap, and to me, that was a fucking letdown. It's kind of what so, they do with the TNT title. They just change the color of the strap. Yeah. So. I'm but I like you. the way they do that without them. Yeah, yeah, but that's its own thing, you know. It it kind of felt they like they stopped a, doing it. Yeah, which I'm glad. I'm glad. Wardlow Cause... got it and killed it. <laughs> Went back to black. Him. Don't blame him. It's all Wardlow's fault. Shut up, Vince. <laughs> it's true. I'm gonna swallow the Bray. I didn't do it because if I did, he'd be dead. Uh, creepy backstage promo. <laughs> Literally, Literally what he he's said. like, I, I, t- I, I, I didn't, I didn't go after LA Knight, and you know how you know I didn't go after LA Knight because if I went after LA Knight, there'd be nothing left of him, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know where the fuck this is going. We had more Uncle Howdy stuff, but I'm invested and I'm interested. I just kind of there's a little bit, little bit of me that wishes it would speed up because I, I want to see Bray back in the ring doing things. So like, yeah. It's getting to the point where it's like, all right, I am enjoying this still, but I need there to be at least some sort of match or some kind of something that happens. Because the LA Knight stuff was good, and now we've kind of... And I get he could be injured or dead or whatever the case. Uh, so 
that's why there isn't a match right now. But like, I need it to progress to something soon. Basically, you're enjoying your your balls being fondled, but you wanted to proceed to the next course of the sexual act. Yeah, put your mouth on it. <laughs> exactly. There would be put your mouth on it. I can, think he was uh, should put your you. mouth on. Can put your mouth on it be the title of the episode? Mm. Yes, put your mouth on it. I'm out. I'm I'm with it. That's a, save that. Save that chat. It's that or Johnny Garbanzo beans, and I feel like Johnny Garbanzo <laughs> beans might be a long title to try to like symmetrically. Fit. How is Johnny Garbanzo beans longer than put your mouth on it? I put so put your mouth and it, it kind of like it's even Johnny. Garbanzo and then beans. It's so like it's like nuts. Whatever you just let me know what we'll we'll ask the chat. Um, but yes, yeah, Bray's creepy promo. Yeah. So go ahead, Kitty. I was gonna no, I was just agreeing. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were gonna add to, to what Matt was saying. I one thing I'm noticing, and I think you might have talked about this before, or maybe I heard it somewhere else. I don't I don't remember. Maybe these are my own inner thoughts but it feels like there's three versions of bray when he's in the backstage being creepy that's like not really bray like like that's bray wyatt like the character and then when he goes to the ring that kind of feels like Wyndham rotunda the person and then there's uncle howdy so i feel like there's three different personas within bray we don't right know now. the bray's uncle howie howdy god damn it i did it again <laughs> i i didn't fuck it up twice and then the last time i did three times the charm uh okay Fair point. So there's at least two different sides to Bray at the moment, two different like personalities, two different demeanors to him. And then there's this whole mystery of Uncle Howdy. It's just interesting, but like you're saying, Matt, you kind of wanted to get to somewhere because mm. Bray has yet to wrestle a match. At this rate, he's probably not gonna have his first match until WrestleMania, which fine. I'm gonna say Royal Rumble. I was going to say, do you think he'll be in the Rumble? I hope he's not in the Rumble because I don't want to see him get eliminated. He won't. He'll win. And he'll beat Roman <laughs> and he'll become champion. Whoa. And then he'll put Burberry on his belt. No, he won't because he <laughs> has better taste than that. Um, <clears throat> That was mine. You're out, right, Vince? You're done? Wait, I think I had one more. Uh, Oh, yeah. It's a spit. Because this is the last thing my man needs. He's he, he's going through a lot, you know. He's 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 in a rough spot. Uh, Karen Cross looks to be targeting Rey Mysterio. Uh, that's the last thing this man needs is to be attacked by a psychopath. <laughs> uh, who did Rey Mysterio piss off? Did uh, he me Triple H? Did, did... <laughs> Everybody for being a you terrible. Know father. You don't realize what this is, Vince. It's the curse of Riddle. Yes, and you've been you have agreed that it exists. You know, know. that this man participated, and you've been fighting that he is okay. getting his just desserts. And okay. you can't you yes. can't acknowledge the curse of Riddle and then okay. deny like Ray Mysterio is Matt. not curse free. Okay, no, Matt. it's the curse we, of Riddle. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I'm not disagreeing at that point. All I'm saying is we've established that there's a a timetable, coherent timetable between the amount of time that you spent with Riddle and the t- period of time it's been since you you been with Riddle. Because you look at Wesley, he's been the North American champion. He spent a few weeks with Matt Riddle, and then he's been gone away from him for a few months, and then he became champion. Rey Mysterio only associated with Matt Riddle <laughs> maybe once, maybe two weeks to- tops. He's been far away from Matt Riddle. Why is the stench of Riddle (laughs) reeking on Rey Mysterio and latching on for dear life? I feel like it's discriminating towards Rey Mysterio specifically. I don't know if it's like stuck in this mask and he just can't get the stench of Riddle out. But I'm going to need that man to like get like an exorcism or something and get that stench out. I don't think that would work. I mean, honestly, it was only like a few months ago that they teamed together. So I, I feel like you feel like it was a lot longer than it really was. So... Uh, this is all within perfect time constraints. Also, he's a terrible father, and he's getting what he deserves. This is a combination of both. Ergo, it's going to be worse. Speaking of terrible father, uh, this is just like a little tidbit of information. My sister... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, it's going somewhere. So my sister 
has been watching Raw every week, and then my dad just kind of like tunes in. So he's been watching like this whole Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio storyline play out. And he's been so pressed by it because it's like, why doesn't he just beat his fucking ass? Why doesn't he just get a belt and just whip his ass? Like, what? And then, and then he saw the clip about him getting beat up in his own house on Thanksgiving. I was like, why is he on his why is he on his ass? What why doesn't he just beat his ass? And my dad is just frustrated. At least there's one Delgado with sense. It's literally. I just <sighs> want better for Ray. Uh, and your dad also does too, and so do we all, but apparently your view of what's better for Ray and the rest of the world's view of what's better for Ray are two different things. I'm all about him whipping Dom's ass. I just want them to be actually book it. They're not going to. Uh, Katie, spit or swallow? I'm uh, I'm going to swallow uh, the American Dragon Jake Long, Brian Danielson, and Dax Harwood. The match was good. I'm about it. It was... Five I, egg plant emojis. <laughs> Okay. Um it I like that um Brian's just, you know, I'm just gonna wrestle whoever I want whenever I want because I'm not gonna be wrestling forever anymore. So he's just gonna try and put on banger matches with people. Nothing with Chris Jericho is ever a banger. But this was great. This was a good match. It kept me entertained. Lots of lots of things happened in the match. It and like it led to him being in the training room and everything we were talking about before. So I was all about this match. This was one of the things that kept me entertained about Dynamite. All right. Do you have any more? Because I've only got one left and I want to close the show the way that I opened the show. Um I have two. Do you want me Go to ahead. do them now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm swallowing Willow Nightingale. Precious human being, a ray of sunshine in a person. I literally want nothing but good things for her. I aspire to be that happy, but I'm a miserable bitch, so I will never be that happy as a person. Um, and she has just gotten herself so organically over, much like the acclaimed, like she really just did that herself. And we all were like petitioning for her to get a contract, which finally did. And she's utilizing it. I thought she'd be the one to take the belt off Jade. Neither here nor there. Uh, and then I'm just spinning everything Darby because fuck Darby Allen. His match with Cool Carter didn't need to happen. And the fact that he's getting a uh, TNT title match on Wednesday pisses me off. Because he, why? Off. he doesn't deserve yeah. that match. I'm I'm good with Samoa Joe choking him out and beating the shit out of him. So, but it's Darby and it's just gonna go on too long and he's just gonna get tossed around, but then have a nice little comeback. And I hope Wardlow costs him the belt. I hope Joe puts Fair him enough. in a stretcher, tosses him over the top rope, and just beats him onto the ring post. All good options. Uh so then that that's it, correct? Mm-hmm. Then we are going to close our Spitter Swallow segment out with the way that I started the show. I am spitting. Lacey goes back to basics, which sounds like a fucking porno. Listen, Lacey Evans, I, I get it. WWE, you, you support the troops. Like, it's your thing. You have this woman. She is in the military. She is an attractive blonde that fits a lot of categories from the past that you guys like to fill. And she is not a terrible wrestler. She's a, she, she's a decent wrestler. Like when she does do her thing, she can wrestle. Mm -hmm. uh, but this thing that you guys have been trying to push that has failed is not going to work with her being like, you tried to do it as a heel. It didn't work. You tried to do it as a baby face. Now you're trying to maybe do it as a baby face again. Like her and her military, it's not going to work. She is not Sergeant Slaughter with tits. Like it's not going to happen guys. So it's, she was so much better off as a Southern belle than she is with whatever, uh marines military shit you guys are trying that is just not connecting and also uh can we make a porn parody of lacy goes to basic because i kind of want to see that now and also would like to cast it if possible <laughs> hit me up yeah i'm with you i feel like they're once again hitting the reset button like what's been like two years straight of like repackaging re 
debuting Lacey Evans. I was never behind Lacey. I, like I was wrestler, behind her last outfit. Yes, you were. Uh, I don't know. I just never got behind her. Like she always like gave, she gave me. You know the vibes that Dijak gives you is is the vibes that Lacey Evans always gave me. I'm not saying that's who she is as a person. I'm just saying those are the vibes I always got. And I never get, really got behind her in ring though. She was solid. She had a lot of cool moveset. To be fair, it's not Dijak that gives me the vibes. It's the character that gives me the vibes. That's what I meant. Dijak okay. the character. Okay. Well, because his real name is Dijak. Dijakovic was, and now they changed it. And neither here nor there. Uh, the character. Uh, the racist cop character that they gave him. Yes. Uh, Katie, what was your favorite show you watched this week? I'm torn. Vince, what was your favorite show this week? Smackdown. I'm going to go Raw. Katie? <laughs> um, Puck. For the sheer fact of the amount of matches that I got, I'm gonna go with Raw. The only reason I was kind of leaning SmackDown was Tegan Knox, but that was like only one thing. It, Raw gave me like Becky. <sighs> you two are ridiculous. Dakota, Rhea, Candice. It gave me more. J and KO. I have to go Raw. As per the Smack and Raw podcast, Raw was the best show of the week. I had a two to one vote, which has not happened in a very fucking long time. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. If you guys stick around, there will be a post show, as you guys know. Uh, Vince, but plug yourself. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at SES Vince. Hit the link tree in my bio, it will take you to everything straight talk. Uh, we haven't done an episode since our Lakers podcast, but go ahead and check that out. The Lakers have turned around since me, TC, and Basharat have talked about the Lakers. So if you like the basketball talk, chat, check it out. Uh, Linktree slash SES, Linktree.com slash Linktree slash SES fans. You know, it's, it's, in my, it's in my bio. You're, you're doing a great job, Vince. Katie, plug yourself. <laughs> You can follow me on Twitter at Katie Rasson13 and link to your robotics account. Thanks, Shelly Showcase, twitch.tv slash Shelly Showcase, typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, youtube.com slash Shelly Showcase. I still watch your videos because they're way more entertaining. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you like to listen. Um, she leads the brand, weekly show we do, latest episodes out, latest episode of Inside the Mind of, the interview series I do with RN is out. That's also going to be the last one for the year, uh, I have decided. Also, because I don't have anyone else lined up. Um, so that's on me, but it's a busy month. There's a lot of other things going on, uh, in the crowd made its return a few weeks ago. That's up there. Savannah has two episodes of like the fuse. New Japan takeovers on a hiatus. Start time with Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. I have to film another one soon. And I am officially uh, a writer now. Uh, I am on floor slapper sports. My article is out there. Uh, so thank you, Tim, for doing that for Shout me. Uh, it it felt good because I ha I literally have a a minor in creative writing, so I I'm finally doing something with that. So thank you, <laughs> and people seem to like it. So I I appreciate all the support. So thank you. All the swallows. And Vince, that's how you plug yourself. Uh you can follow me at my readers on MTTRDDR on Twitter only, also at Getting Off. Tomorrow night, same time as this podcast, we are doing an episode of Getting Off called uh, Getting a Facial. It's all about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It will be me, Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay, Justin from the Get Show Podcast, D Rod, and Mr. Reek Havoc. So come join us to talk. What? That's a lot of people. Suck it. And? Uh, I. <laughs> I got this. I I got this. Anyway, if you want to hear about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and our thoughts on that, please tune in and check that out tomorrow right here where you're watching this show. Um, because I don't have to plug anything. Oh, uh, Facebook.com slash group slash slash <laughs> is also a thing. And everything else is in my link tree if you want to find it at either at Getting Off or at Matt Ritter. M-A-T or M-A-T-T-R-I-D-E-R. For Daddy Delgado, who thinks he can tell me how many people I can have on a fucking podcast, and Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay, 
I am the patron saint of podcasting, the warden, Matt Ritter, and this has been the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Later, y'all. Yeah.